It is only the preseason, but the new look Bulls have won their first two games by a combined 72 points. The former dunk champ Derek Jones Jr., the bald Mamba, the biggest baller, and Debo seem to have found a new home. Considering sophomore and possible breakout player Patrick Williams has been sidelined through all of this, the Chicago Bulls already look dangerous. Stay tuned to see the five underrated wing defenders picked up by GM Mark Eversley and whether or not the Bulls' roaring start means anything. Before continuing, around three quarters of you watching right now aren't subscribed, so if you love everything basketball, you'll love this channel, I can promise you that. Please subscribe and join the family. Also, leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. Chicago's posted two 36-point blowout wins where they've led by over 40 points and owned the pace of play. These are exhibition games, and sure, the Bulls have only played the Cavaliers and Pelicans, but the fact that they haven't taken their foot off the gas pedal and instantly found an offensive flow has been impressive to witness. A player who's averaged 19 points per game already four times in his young career and has broken out into a bona fide go-to score, Zach Levine, deserves players around him who adequately support his all-star contributions. Now it seems the man finally has all the tools to make his first career playoff appearance. After obliterating New Orleans, Levine had this to say, I think we're just trying to play to our personnel. There's no reason to slow down when we have so many athletes on the floor. Obviously, with Vooch in the game, we're going to have to get him touches here and there. But the ball's falling into his lap with him trailing into threes or getting into the pocket. We're playing fast. Whoever gets the ball to rebound, we're out. If not, we're giving it to Zoe and letting him call the play and go from there. Since Levine's been a bull, the one bit of disrespect critics have gone after him for is that he's a ball stopper. Would he be willing to adjust his playing style with more talent? Was he capable of doing that? Shockingly for his haters, right out of the gates, no one's embraced Chicago's new offensive system as much as Levine, who seems to barely have hold of the rock at all while quietly leading the Bulls in scoring in both preseason game wins. Seven treacherous below 500 seasons in Minneapolis and Chi-Town since being drafted back in 2014 have molded an individual that's desperate to win. Levine could care less about Damar, Ball, Caruso, Vucevic, or anyone else taking away his field goal attempts. He's more than willing to let his points per game fall off for the betterment of the team. That's what makes Zach an ideal franchise player to build around. Quote, you don't want to have to try and do everything. It's not fun, Levine said. I'm getting easy shots. I missed a bunch tonight, actually. Two for seven on threes. I should have made three more in my book. Not getting wide open shots and still am able to play my game and be in the pick and roll and handle the ball, but it's not like it's an every possession type thing. I'm enjoying it. Zach and Nikola Vucevic have built off their chemistry they were partially able to develop last campaign as Vuce was shipped off over to Chicago at the deadline. These two running pick and pops, as well as Lonzo and Vooch doing the same thing, allows DeMar DeRozan to be a third slash fourth option at times, and that's a great sign for Chicago fans considering Debo was expected to be the number two guy. Of course, when he needs to step up, DeRozan will be there next to Levine, but the fact that DeMar is not forced into doing too much for the first time in his career is something to keep an eye on. Of all the additions Levine's benefited from, Lonzo Ball's been the best fit. The five-year pro has an 80 plus million dollar contract to live up to, and from his pickpockets defensively in the lane to his pushing of the pace offensively, it seems like Zoe's got a shot to exceed expectations. As Bulls color commentator Stacey King has started saying, turn the AC up because Alex Caruso's shown up to Chicago and cooled off their struggles on both ends of the floor. One of the game's biggest fan favorites, the Bald Mamba, brings a much needed electricity to a Bulls team that's lacked flair over the last half decade. For NBA players, coaches, and even the media, preseason is the time to develop habits that you'll require during the 82 game grind and playoffs. It doesn't mean anything in terms of seeding, obviously, but the teams who develop the proper rhythm and trust with one another over the course of these five early October games, I guess, have somewhat of an advantage. It hasn't officially started, but our first impression of the Chicago Bulls in their 56th season as an organization has been an incredibly loud one. 
and for other contenders in the Eastern Conference, this team can't be slept on as a potential threat to win the title before showing you five other new Bulls players who I haven't mentioned yet and then looking at the most dangerous part about Chicago. In his second year as Chicago's head coach, Billy Donovan had this to say about his team's new attack. It's the activity of these guys. Lonzo is very, very long. Alex Caruso is long. Damar is long. Zach is long. They have great wingspans, and they can cover up a lot of ground in getting passing lanes. When we're in good position and those guys can get their length involved, that's when we can be disruptive. They have good hands, and they can kind of slap down and generate a lot of steals and loose ball opportunities. And one thing is encouraging, we've been pretty good these first couple games of coming up with loose basketballs. These guys find ways to come out with these plays. Because of those guys' speed and quickness and length, we can be very explosive in transition if we can get the ball. Coach Donovan also has the services of active, pesky, and lengthy underrated defensive wings like Derek Jones Jr., Troy Brown Jr., Javante Green, plus Stanley and Elise Johnson. Jones Jr.'s lateral quickness and versatility will be a great asset like it was for the Miami Heat. Elise Johnson's screen setting and board getting have shown flashes of legit value. Elise led the team in rebounding off the bench against the Cavaliers and seems to be the ultimate energy guy up front. The young and Troy Brown Jr. comes over from Washington after being the number 15 pick for the Wizards three years ago. Brown Jr.'s 6'6 frame and 7'0 wingspan give the Bulls yet another wing defender. And just for insurance, putting the icing on the cake out on the perimeter is the journeyman forward Stanley Johnson. I don't expect SJ to get too many minutes, but the former lottery pick's good for a few minutes here and there to lock in on wing players who are going off. Don't forget about Javante Green, who's been with the Celtics for the last few years and is yet another scrappy defender on the wing who can cause some havoc. Those five players aren't the biggest names, but they were some stellar under-the-radar pickups who cover up Chicago's biggest weakness. So what does this hot start mean for Chicago, and is it too early to say they're legit contenders? To answer the latter, I'd have to say yes, the regular season still doesn't start for a week and a half. I'm going to be keeping a close eye on this Bulls team throughout 21-22, so expect more videos posted on them, but for now, I guess you could say this blistering start means that expectations are high. And it also means the Bulls aren't wasting any time. Not only is Levine desperate to win, but DeMar hasn't been on a contender since 2016. Vooch has made the playoffs only twice in his long career. While, like Zach, Lonzo's never been to the postseason. The entire core is more than willing and desperate for success. They're hungry for it. That's what makes Chicago a unique Eastern Conference powerhouse. Of course, the Bucks, Heat, Sixers, and Celtics have supreme firepower and are no walk in the park. But the freshness, overall vibe, and top-heavy talent from the Bulls should at least put them in the same conversation as those aforementioned squads. We'll see if Chicago continues to live up to the hype. But let me know if you think the Bulls are contenders in the comments. Of course, it's early, but this team's gotten my attention early on. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.